Thank you for dropping in today to listen to an episode and recording with Chase Turner. Chase Turner is an author, minister, uh, kingdom evangelist, bilingual leader, uh, leads an amazing nonprofit organization that reaches South America, Central America, and is doing amazing things. He's also a ninja warrior and competes in those uh, semi-professionally as an amateur as well. So you will enjoy this episode as a kingdom leader, a high-level, ambitious-minded uh, uh, overachiever. And yet with that in mind, we all still have our areas of growth that we desire uh, to lean into. Um, I've edited parts of this out uh, to get to the, the parts that you may enjoy the most. Um, as Chase shares how one of his desires is to be able to say yes and no more clearly to social media, uh, but with the impact of having a clearer yes and a clearer no to the people that he gives his time and energy to. If you find this helpful and encouraging to you, please drop me a message, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and please uh, continue to champion hope, uh, to lead full and live free. Uh, what's your what's your belief about how um, how these two are used? Um, I I typically last that question. My belief about how they're used. My, my work social media is all about promoting ways to serve other people through training them in Bible stuff and. All of the uh, Facebook Live, all that kind of stuff that I do is always uh, in Spanish, and it's to teach. And obviously, it's all free for people. Our, our Spanish ministry uh, is free for everybody, whatever it is that we send them. And, uh, but the personal, to me, if I'm going to use my personal social media account, um, if I'm posting something, promoting something, I, I, if it's the book or uh, if it's not the book, it typically don't post a whole lot. I don't share what I'm eating or, uh, you know, if we do something crazy with exercise that, you know, might post something about that. But to me, a lot of, a lot of it's either self-promotion or, um, you know, along those lines and I, I don't care much for it. So, uh, if I'm promoting the book, I'm usually trying to get something away in conjunction with it. Um, I don't know why there's an appeal to learn everything about everybody, but for some reason, that's uh, the biggest time suck for social media. Um, so I suppose if I was more uh, driven to, you know, maybe do some other things, I wouldn't be caught up in the, the time suck. And I, and I don't spend a tremendous amount of time on the, the personal side of it. Um, I'd be fine using no time for it. Uh, it just, it doesn't happen right now. Sometimes I may feel like I need a reprieve from uh, the busy of maybe the the intentional time I spend with all of these other areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, sometimes I just need a reprieve to see what's going on with other people and come back to it. So, but again, I think having a support system in place is um, really a big key. To, to not having to deal with the, the pressures, anxiety, stresses that otherwise would come about. Um, what what becomes possible when when you have this ability to to say no? I'm a I'm a big believer in that every time you say yes to somebody, you say no to somebody else. And um, me choosing the best yes is very important. Whether I'm saying yes to myself, yes to a project, yes to my family, those kind of things. And, um, I've been pretty upfront with myself about what I'm willing to commit to. And if I say yes to somebody, it's because I want to do whatever it is. Uh, I, I don't say yes to appease people. I don't say yes for 
any other reason other than that's something I want to do. And uh, I don't get guilted into doing things. Um, I've, I've met a lot of people that just through ministry that will say yes because they feel bad if they don't. Um, I, I've been pretty, pretty forthcoming on all that kind of stuff. And so saying no to people uh, is because of one of two reasons. One, I just don't want to do something. Or I genuinely don't feel like I have time for it. And so when I say no to people, that really frees me up. Um, either to have some me time or to fulfill other commitments uh, that I've either already made or potential commitments that if they don't happen, then I just have some free time. But at the same time, you want to be able to say no to people in order to for this time management, right? Sure. Okay. You, earlier, you mentioned, um, I guess, really over the last ten to twelve weeks of of this COVID um, unusual living. Uh, you said it's kind of been refreshing, um, right? Because the the perceived notion that you haven't been asked do a lot, which hasn't really forced you to say yes or no um, versus three months ago. Say more about refreshing. Um, I'm, I'm very much a people person. I like being around people. Um, but at the same time, I one of the goals I've set in life is to be content wherever I'm at. And this is not ideal circumstances for most people and finding content being at home all the time uh, is kind of a challenge. Overcoming that challenge is refreshing to see that, hey, this is a difficulty and, and I don't have a lot of difficulty, so to speak, in my life. This has been a challenge. And so it's been refreshing to see that. Yes, I, I do have uh, this challenge in front of me, but I can, I can overcome. I can find content and I can find ways that the challenges of not being around people while it's not the same with the screen, it's in some ways fixed. Uh, I've learned that, you know, on Wednesday nights, I may teach a small group of people in a building. I can get on Facebook Live and 300 people tune in. You know, so it's, again, it's not necessarily about me, but you're able to help people in greater ways. One of the things that I've learned to be able to do um, for me, refreshing is uh, overcoming challenges because I haven't met a lot of challenges in life. It's a, a gratifying feeling uh, to be able to do that. What, what does refreshing do for you as you think, as you continue to explore this, this yes and no uh, to people? Um, I think just the positive nature in which we live, you know, people, uh, myself, when I'm refreshed, I, I have more energy, more positivity. I try to stay in a refreshed lifestyle. One, uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier was, um, you know, getting your cup filled uh, is important as a minister. Being in, oh, on Sunday, just for example, I, I still teach, but there's, a thousand other preachers that are now posting their stuff online that I can tap into. And that's refreshing because I'm learning as before nobody put stuff online like that. But since we've been forced to, um, I've met a lot of people in the last couple of weeks that um, I've learned a lot from. And anytime I learn, I feel refreshed because when I feel refreshed, I'm more motivated to go and share what I've learned with other people. And I love to teach. And so um, that aspect of it's been really good. Okay. What would you, what would you do different 
if you're looking six months from now about being refreshed when it comes to, to this idea of time management? Um, I guess a lot of that depends on how the next six months goes. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard for me in many ways to think about that question because I'm very much um, a day at a time. I've got, I've got these all over um, my desk. And so uh, I have a very structured routine of things that have worked well for me for a long time. And so um, I, I want to grow in what I learn over, over the next six months. Um, always when I'm learning, I, I want to be teaching. That's, to me, that's the purpose behind learning. Um, and so in six months, if I look back and say, you know what, I, I read 10 more books and, and I was able to, to share what I learned with other people and, and spent my time, uh, extra time that I had sharing what I learned with other people, um, pouring into to my family more. I love teaching my family what I'm, I'm learning, uh, regardless of what it may be in, on their level. And so um, I think in six months, if I can look back and, and say that, you know, if I was able to, you know, spend time, have time, save time, uh, Still time, you know, we, everybody's got the same amount of it. And so if I can manipulate my time, manage my time uh, in a better way for the next six months where um, things improve, it's a hard thing truly to say that um, because, again, I don't want to sound arrogant. I, I feel like I do a pretty good job with those things. Um, everybody can improve on, on something. I'm, I'm not perfect by any stretch. Um, with, with that time, I think I don't feel like I can do better with more time. Right. I just think that, you know, like I said, making sure I don't add more to my plate than I can handle over the next six months. And it'll be interesting coming out of COVID, whenever that happens. It may not even be in six months. Um, but, but when we do, keeping this same mindset of I, I did pretty good the last six months, not saying yes to everybody because I didn't have to. And so coming out of it, keeping that mindset of, you know, we enjoy being at home. I'll give you a sense of the way we vacation. What do you want? What do you, the person watching this video want at home, at work, in your marriage or leadership? Are you drifting through your life frantic, fearful, exhausted, lonely, doubting, insecure? I've been there and this question is the path to hope. What do you want? In two years, five years, 10 years, how are you going to get there? Hope is not a crapshoot. At times, it may seem like smoke and mirrors, but research shows that hope is a clear choice. Choosing hope requires a framework, structure, and a safe conversation, allowing you to break free from the isolation. And right now, you can choose a calm, confident, and connected life. If you are ready and brave enough to choose hope, then let's connect and have a conversation.